Simon the Board Aho here, and John Cena has a brand new series out. It's known as Peacemaker. It's on HBO Max or something. I can't remember. Maybe it's Disney. Who even knows? And because of that, he is doing the PR round. So what happens when you get John Cena and you sit him down for an interview? You say, hey, John, tell us about your lifting. Tell us about your diet. So now we have some information. And as always, when it comes to Mr. Cena, it's all a little bit weird. So the crux of the article is that he has now shifted his training and his bodybuilding around so that it suits his new schedule of being an actor, but also because he wants to lift when he is 80 years old. And now Cena has talked about time and time again how he was a Tupperware guy when he was on the road. Being a professional wrestler, he would make sure he had his meals. He ate six to seven meals a day. He'd made sure he'd get his protein in, so on and so forth. It's all the traditional stuff that we have heard a thousand times before. However, when you do cross over into the mainstream, these conversations, for one reason or another, get more expansive, I suppose, but also more sort of locked away in a little cupboard. Let's just get into it. And the first thing we get into, and he actually talks about it right here, I have the article up on my screen, is that he doesn't do 600 pound squats anymore. Like, you are able to find loads of clips on YouTube, especially of Cena doing some pretty impressive le lifts. Like, this dude was strong, probably naturally strong. We're not going to get into all the other stuff. There are other channels that do that far better than I. So this is essentially, as he becomes, I think he's like 45 years old now, he's starting looking to the future. And I suppose to protects his joints and to make sure he's all supple he has reduced the amount he's lifting which makes all the sense in the world like i don't want to be the bearer of bad news but eventually in all of our lives we're going to get to the point where we're kind of broken down and you've got to make i suppose unfavorable changes now interestingly at the moment he's only working out twice a week or so he says remember always take this stuff with a pinch of salt because they may be trying to sell you something or there may be an ulterior motive we don't know about but when uh, gq asked him you know how are you training at the moment he says he used to train four times a week so he's taking three days off remember that too you grow when you are resting and at the moment i just read the quote you're probably only going to get two workouts in a week rather than the four i'm used to now don't forget this is when he's on set filming peacemaker so when he's at home and he's between jobs he'll go back to doing i presume four workouts out of seven and he also mentioned that sometimes he was able to get in three which felt like a blessing and as this i had to focus more towards being surgically correct about my nutrition this is what i mean about cena being a bit weird he never actually explains what he means by that we get a little scalp and go mew, mew, mew. hydration which is something that is massively overlooked when it comes to lifting weights is especially when people first start lifting, you've got to be drinking a ton of water. I think your muscles are like 75% water. So if you're not giving them some buddies to hang around with, you're never going to be able to get anywhere. And also another massive one that people forget, making sure you get enough sleep. Now, I don't can't get enough sleep. So how flipping John Cena, who's like the busiest man in the world, is doing it, I don't know. He also talks about how he brings his own food to uh, to set. So I suppose he is still a Tupperware guy in that sense. But as he says, he wants to be able to hit his numbers and get the nutrients that he needs. This is the most interesting bit when he starts talking about how his training has switched uh, because he is going to be 45 this year. I started lifting weights in a dedicated fashion when I was 12 years old. If you do the math, I'm coming up on 35 years of that. That's a long time, which doesn't make any sense mathematically. Don't worry. I guess he's like Scott Steiner. The biggest shift was when I was in WWE. Uh, so the biggest shift when I was in WWE is that it's every day. I tried to be the strongest version I can be. Now I'm trying to be able to lift weights when I'm 80 years old. So I need to be a little bit more careful of myself in the long term. I have a 40,000 foot perspective. Another John Cena line. It's a lot more work on flexibility and a lot more warming up the stuff that I used to hate to do. I've learned to like it because it gets me feeling good. And when he actually gets into what he does in the gym, he spends 15 minutes doing cardio, then around about one hour, 60 minutes of physical training. And I've heard him talk about this before when he's done he does 40 minutes to an hour of stretching at the end and basically a whole yoga routine so what's that that's basically two hours right he's essentially he's in the gym and 50 percent of that is dedicated to ensuring that he feels good and he's warmed down he's able to walk out the gym with his head held high both figuratively and literally when he is doing his training too he mentions compound movements olympic weightlifting and power movements it's the same stuff that he always has done. So again, go YouTube John Cena lifting weights and you'll be able to see that. He just doesn't go as heavy as he used to anymore because of his age. Now, do I think you need to be able to do 40 minutes stretching afterwards? I mean, probably not. But again, I'm a lot younger than John Cena. So I'm sure he would have said this at my age. And in you know 20 years time, I'm gonna be like, oh man, I really shouldn't have said that. But it is massively important. So many people are either delayed or they're running a bit behind. So they just skip the warm up altogether. Never do that. I honestly believe, let's say, let's condense it to 10 minutes. I honestly believe you're better to add in 10 minutes of warming up and cut 10 minutes off lifting weights than doing it the other way around because you're probably going to injure yourself. And if you injure yourself, you're not just losing 10 minutes of that session. You're going to lose days. You're going to lose weeks. You're going to lose months. And when you are done, make sure you try and dedicate another 10 minutes to doing all of this stuff. And I don't care what you do. I mean, 
mean, personally, I would do dynamic stretching and cardio before you do anything. So dynamic stretching is just when you're hopping around a little bit. And when you are doing, I'd do a little bit more cardio. And then I would do some, I get this confused, static stretching, right? That's when you hold it in place. But that's what I'm trying to tell you, right? You hold it in place. So the more there's the stretching that you're used to essentially the stuff that you see in yoga and of course you can focus on the muscle group that you've worked so let's say you've done legs you can do a bunch of leg stretches but don't forget no matter what you're lifting your back is always going to be taking some of the load so are your shoulders so are other joints that maybe you're not even aware of so make sure you're taking care of them and if you do have 40 minutes then hell yeah why don't you try and do it what i do is like i said i do 10 minutes warming up i do 10 minutes warming down but i try and do yoga a couple of times a week i chose to do ddpy ddp yoga who used to be a professional wrestler if you don't know just because at the time you know i used to go and do yoga classes in an actual gym but i moved and i couldn't find anywhere around where i do it now that suited my schedule and because i'm into professional wrestling i was like well i try ddps it's actually very good and the app is very good and it has workouts all over the place now sounds like i'm trying to pimp them out i don't have no affiliation with them whatsoever it just worked for me so hopefully it can work for you he also talks about when this all began it's when he did a movie with jackie chan three or four years ago and they didn't care about how strong he was they just wanted him to be able to do a kick over his head, which he wasn't able to do. And that's when they put him on this crazy diet where they were stretching him around. And he says he lost 20 pounds. And I think this is true. There's a picture. I'll try and find it. Make sure it's on the screen now. When John Cena did, I mean, he's still a big dude, but he didn't look as gargantuan as he had done when he was being a professional wrestler. And I think it ties into this. And what I really enjoy about this interview is not only did he talk about losing all that weight helped him in a pain sense because he wasn't carrying as much load. He also told how hard it was to do it. He would look in the mirror. John Cena would look at himself in the mirror and go, I don't like what I'm seeing. It's horrible. I hate it. I look like a small guy. Now, again, we can compare it and say he's got smaller. But ain't no one saying that ain't a guy in great shape. But this just proves it. You will chase that dangling carrot. One day, maybe you too will end up looking like John Cena. But something like this can happen and you're going to be down on it. Always keep that in mind because it happens to 100% of people. Moving on to what he eats meal-wise. He eats smaller meals throughout the day, which I presume is what he's always done. But, I mean, who the hell knows? And he instantly goes on and goes and poo-poos a bunch of diets, which I'm a big fan because, you know, there are a bunch of fad diets out there. And they may work for you, but also what's probably going to happen is you'll lose a bunch of weight. You'll then fall off this diet because you're a human being. And that's what happens. And then you pile the weight back on because it wasn't a sustainable plan. So he doesn't really get into it as much as you would want because he says he eats good choices he eats good quality foods and he gets enough protein although the one thing that he still does and i found this absolutely incredible he got into lifting weights at 13 years old and he bought a tub of weight gainer 2500 2500 from twin lab as a meal supplement and he still takes that in that's what i'm taking from this sentence i mean it literally says i guess that's something i started at a young age i remember being 13 years old and buying this supplement i just use it as a meal supplement i've been doing that for so long and that's the one thing that hasn't really changed it's still those small meals throughout the day i'm conscious enough to try and make better nutrition choices every chance i get but that's one thing that has remained constant for me now i don't know whether he means the small meals a day or that weight gainer but if John Cena is still on a weight gainer, I think that's incredible. I personally don't like weight gainers, but doesn't this go to show that it's horses for courses, whatever that phrase is, because if it works with John Cena, well, it's probably going to work for at least one other person. Now, when you get into what he does talk about his diet, it doesn't really give you the information that you want because he starts his day with a strong latte mixed with skim milk for the nutrients. I've never heard anyone say that, but hey, I'm sure there's logic behind it. Uh, he gets his vitamin D, he gets his protein, and he even gets the sugar from the skim milk that's going to get you going. I don't know anyone that gets going gets a buzz of a teeny bit of sugar from skim milk but again this is john cena he's not me i don't know with probably some sort of protein meal supplement so i guess that shake he's just talked about but he also mentioned that it could be a bar uh, like a protein bar and he also makes sure he gets a little bit of protein a little bit of carbs and a little bit of fats if it's a day i'm working out he then goes and does his workout but even before that he has a whole 90 minutes waking up process as he wouldn't be able to be a soldier because he needs to get going and a lot of people are like that i'm actually quite good about getting out of bed smashing a coffee and be like oh i'm going to go other people need some time in order to set into the day goes to show once again find out what works for you and go with it talks about working out if it is a working out day and then says it's probably four hours since i've had 200 to 400 calories how he's getting this tiny breakfast in i don't know but hey ho apparently he only eats 400 calories and he goes work out i would hate that but his next meal is going to be heavy on vegetables and he just throws in there my wife makes a beautiful big salad and we'll have something with poached eggs she also makes wonderful breakfast sandwiches and i'm like john john I need more, man. 
what's going into these sandwiches? What kind of bread are you using? What's in the salad? But we don't know. And otherwise, he does mention that he's kind of, well, he's less stressful about it in terms of what he eats. Because throughout the day, it's kind of listening to your body. I enjoy the taste of coffee. So I probably have round two around mid-afternoon and that's it for the caffeine. Because of course, he's well into sleeping, which I'd make sense. I wouldn't have coffee past 2 p.m. at the very, very latest. So even if I have it at half two, I am up all, all evening. Also talks about how back in the day when he was living with the bodybuilding life, he would bring meals to restaurants, which I totally get, right? I've been there. If you're super serious about it, your brain does go kind of crazy. But now he has laxed off a bit. He talks about going to London. He didn't train for two weeks and you know he would eat healthy but he would just go into restaurants and try and figure it out mentally like do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that now he never specifically goes into well i eat you know i'm having chicken for breakfast i'm having steak for dinner which i would like to know and he has been very vague with it all which is i kind of don't mind it massively because he's putting over the fact that it's better to be a bit well, not to go too crazy with it but this is also a man that went crazy with it for 20 years and built one hell of a physique so i suppose you know you are going to have to be a bit more serious about it. You can't do this all of the time because you may never get there to begin with. I do like the line, uh, some people call those cheat yays when he just pulls back completely. But I don't like to use that term because that means you're not accountable. I call it living. You have to be able to do that, especially if you like food and you get satisfaction from it. I view food as a vehicle for company and conversation. So I don't want to rob myself of that. I don't want to be the guy bringing in Tupperware and eating the stale same food all of the time. Quite a nice uh, life lesson to lead there. But again, you can't do that all of the time because A, you don't have John Cena's money. You don't have John Cena's genetics and he did the opposite for a long time so it's an interesting article i would go and read it um to sort of get a few more bits of information out there but it was just it, I, we know he has a salad a breakfast sandwich and a latte <laughs> <laughs> we didn't learn anything else about that. But I'm sure if you read this, and again, go and research all the YouTube stuff that John Cena has posted out there, you'll be able to get a little bit of an idea of this. But don't start doing this. Absolutely not. You're not going to look like John Cena. We don't know what else is going on. But as a man who is a fan of bodybuilding, lifting weights, fitness, the fitness palace of love, and wrestling, as soon as I saw this article, I was like, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk about it. And we've done it, and we'll do it again soon. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the bell, ding, ding, so you know other videos are going live. There is a video on the screen. Give it a click, because YouTube loves it. Write whatever you want in the comments. I'm all about the algorithm as much as possible, which is why I also massively appreciate a subscribe. Also, a big user of Gorilla Mind supplements. Go to GorillaMind.com forward slash Simon. Use the code Simon to get 10% off. Also, in Greg Doucette's Power 13 cookbook, if you're looking for a diet, but you don't want to eat broccoli, chicken, salad, that was gibberish. Broccoli, chicken, and salad, you know the deal. Also, on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316, because we don't do mega views. So if you want to support the channel with money, you can. SimonMiller.BigCartel.com for merch on Instagram at SimonMiller316. The same with Twitter. I'm on Cameo if you want a shout out. But what I appreciate the most is the view. You take care of yourself and I'll speak to you again soon.